Good evening to all here in the West. I am Bill Weir and perhaps some of you on coastal communities spent the morning like we did here at the Santa Monica Pier waiting for a tsunami. But the stress of that ordeal and the size of the waves that came were just a tiny reflection of what's still unfolding in Japan. Where tonight, nuclear officials there are warning of a possible nuclear reactor meltdown. They have been watching three facilities near the epicenter with concern all day, and at one of them, fuel rods are now exposed, and if they stay that way, they could release radioactivity and a disaster of unknown proportions. The effort to sort through the massive disaster areas in northern Japan is just beginning. And take a look at this, an aerial of what around 24 hours ago was a town of 71,000 people now completely underwater, no structure still standing. And Japanese media has just reported that authorities there have found two to 300 bodies on a beach in Sendai, the city near the epicenter of today's massive 8.9 magnitude quake. But that was just part of what has been a day of historic devastation for this American ally. It is Saturday in Japan, and a nation all too familiar with earthquakes is still trying to grasp the most violent ever recorded in their land. The countryside is choked with smoke from fires that burned all night long. More than 400 are dead, almost a thousand still missing. Entire neighborhoods are underwater, and the world watches as two nuclear reactors remain dangerously unstable. As rescues begin in Japan, families back here in the States anxiously await any word on their loved ones. But it was this moment, 2.46 in the afternoon, when Japan's nightmare began. The ground began to shake. 32 million people here in Tokyo braced themselves for the worst. The 8.9 magnitude Tembler violently jolted the country. It was a thousand times stronger than the earthquake that struck Haiti. Large chunks of buildings fell to the streets as people rushed for cover. The communication infrastructure so stressed, the occasional phone call or Skype interview is the only way to get eyewitness accounts. Uh, it started off as a shake and then really turned into more of a swing and just, you know, things falling off shelves and um, this real sense of kind of nausea and seasickness almost with the whole earth uh, shaking underneath you. I did think at one point that I really might die here. The Japanese TV station's NHK offices across the country shook. I couldn't keep standing. So we instantly knew that it's going to be super huge, and uh, many of my colleagues went onto the ta table to protect themselves. In all corners of the country, everyday life upended. This government ministry meeting interrupted. These school children forced to run for their lives, and airport workers covered their heads with security bins as the earthquake brought down a huge chunk of ceiling. Pillars toppled at a Buddhist temple. Fires burned across the northern part of the country as gas lines ruptured, and this oil refinery was engulfed in massive flames. People started running out of nearby buildings, um, and when you looked up, uh, you could see uh, that the skyscrapers nearby were swaying like trees in the wind. It was by far uh, the most violent uh, and terrifying uh, earthquake I have ever been in. These trains wobbled on their tracks as the earth moved below. Highways buckled, roadways split in half. The aftershocks, dozens of them went on for hours. The aftershock is large. You know, I, I thought this was it. I thought, you know, everybody's been talking about the big one. And it was the big one, but this one was so strong that it scared the, the, the heck out of you. Or worse. Meanwhile, on the coast, Tsunami alarms blasted to the devastation yet to come. The 36-foot waves were relentless, mercilessly consuming everything in their path, pulling this house right off its foundation and watch as it destroys an entire village while still burning fires ride the waves. You get a chilling sense of the enormity of it all, seeing this man on the back of his truck watching helplessly as the destruction swirls around him. You're seeing live footage of a tsunami engulfing the port area of Kamai City in Iwate Prefecture. This is what's happening right as we speak. Hundreds of cars were swept along the current, boats tossed like bathtub toys, 
Devastated by the tsunami was the port city of Sendai, the closest city to the epicenter. Floodwaters consume the city's airport. And with runways underwater, people sought refuge on the roof of the terminal. The quake triggered a state of emergency at two of the country's nuclear reactors. With their cooling systems crashed, a China syndrome meltdown and radiation leaks are feared. Thousands within a six-mile radius were evacuated and cooling agents were rushed in, part of a desperate effort to avoid the worst. The clock is ticking. Every minute that passes, we come closer to the time when there could be a secondary earthquake, when a weakened pipe finally just gives way, ruptures, and all that cooling water bleeds onto the floor, the clock is ticking. It means that we have to get those backup generators on, on site working as soon as possible. American Ryan McDonald shot this video. Oh my God, that is the biggest earthquake to date. He was just 65 miles south of Sendai. Oh. I turned around, I saw the houses behind my apartments were shaking violently. My apartment was just in shambles. Um, I actually started feeling like I could die. It is still going. Oh my God, the building's gonna fall. I just drove around to try to find food. All the grocery stores are closed. We do not have any food uh, or very little food. Uh, this was my dinner, uh, cup noodles and Thing of orange juice, and that was it. That's the last thing I ate, and that was about 10 hours ago. Um, the only other thing, the only other things I have in the house were like this half thing of tomato sauce, which I'm gonna make that work somehow. You know, the many houses around the coast area flashed away, so people lost the houses or possessions. Uh, even they don't have anything, you know, to eat or uh, drink, or you know, they cover themselves uh, over the night. Overnight, the military loaded up supplies to be distributed, but by morning, the destruction was in full view. Tall buildings alone in a sea of water and debris, many still stranded on rooftops. Older buildings, traditional homes, little more than splinters now. Cars ready to be shipped abroad are burning, and in the mountains near Nagano, the ground crumbled beneath the railroad tracks. There are even fears about avalanches.